we will start with uh, Sean Cunningham. Hey, good afternoon, Luke. Um, you know, I know today is a tough day. I mean, one year anniversary of losing a former, you know, friend and teammate, a uh, guy you considered family. Um, you called that 24 hour period uh, when you spoke to the media after the death of Kobe Bryant is, you know, the, the, among the, the hardest, roughest 24 hours in your life. I'm just wondering how you reflect back one year later and what you remember about that day. Well, I remember everything about the day. It's, it's kind of mind blowing that it's been a year already. Um, it's one of those powerful events. I think that, um, you know, when you're a member of this basketball world, you'll never forget where you were. Uh, I remember every emotion like it was yesterday when we're sitting on that bus. Um, every thought, uh, the denial, all of it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's painful. Um, you know, the, it's, again, probably I'd say is very impressive and, and speaks um, to the impact that, that Kobe had on so many in our basketball community that, um, you know, it, Every year on this day, I would imagine there's going to be millions of people uh, honoring him and talking about him. And and uh, I know he, he he got taken too early, but um, that's that's pretty pretty special, pretty powerful to to have that type of impact and influence on so many people. And then, just what does it mean to you to? You, as you mentioned, a guy who had so much impact on so many people and they honor him in such a way. Uh, and it's somebody that you had such a close relationship with. How, how, how much more special does that make it? Well, I mean, I, I, I feel I feel lucky. I feel honored to have spent that amount of time with him um, to be his teammate, to to really feel and, and, and compete in these games. Uh, um with him and have those experiences and have those uh, those memories of, of on and off the court, um, you know, hanging out and laughing and joking and winning and losing and every everything else is just uh, I feel I feel honored and lucky to have got to go, to go through all of that. James, Ham. Hey, Luke, have you reached out to any of your former teammates just to sort of go back through some of the Kobe memories together? Yeah, you know, I talked to, to um, today specifically, no, but I'm on a group chat with a couple of them. Um, you know, I talked to, to, to different guys throughout when I see them. Um, so that's, you know, the, the, that, the, those, those conversations just kind of happen every time we talk. Uh, but yeah, not, not today, no. And what's it like to go back to Orlando after being stuck there for so long? Is there a little different feel this, this time around? Yeah, it's a totally different feel. I mean, it's, I mean, uh, I'll be, uh, the, the yacht club at, at Disney was nice. We had a good setup there. Um, but it's, um, you know, it, it, it it's, it, it's funny to think and, and kind of see the difference of where we are now and trying to play through this and with the games being postponed and the, in the, in the country still being where it's at. Uh, Cause I remember thinking in the bubble, like how, how are we going to get through the next season? Um, so uh, we're getting through um, and it's obviously it's, it's not uh, ideal, but it is good to be playing basketball Um and you know there'll be some fans in the arena, so we're making we're making progress and baby steps like to getting back to where we all want this thing to be. Tony Harvey. Yeah, coach. Uh, getting back to Orlando, the team at hand that you will be uh, facing uh, tomorrow. Uh, you just wanted to get your uh, commentary on you know what this team outlook is and what you expect to see from them. Yeah, uh, you know, so this team has been struggling to win, but they're playing really well. Uh, you know, I want the Indiana game. They lost, uh, you know, they lost at the end. They, they, you know, had a good chance of putting that away and turned it over on an SOB late. Um, yeah, then the, the first of the two Charlotte games they just played, they had a pretty much a 13, 14 point lead all game long and then, you know, lost it in the fourth and then, uh, you know, took care of their – of Charlotte last night. So they're, they're playing well, even though they haven't won a lot. Um, a big part of it is, uh, is Vooch and, and Fournier and then Ross coming in off the bench. Um, 
you know, the, the, those are kind of the, the, the three, uh, you know, the three big time scorers and playmakers that they, they, they have putting them in those positions. But look, even, uh, you know, even their young point guard, Anthony and, and uh, Clark stepped up last game. So, you know, they got, they got plenty of weapons and we got to be ready to come in and, and really play with the same edge we uh, we played with our last game before we hit, we came out on this road trip. I do have one other question, too. If you don't mind me asking, this is not really a basketball question. Jabari Parker car. I was trying to get a question in to uh, Hassan about this car. <laughs> what, what is this car? <laughs> this, uh, I, I don't know. When he's got a whole collection of old school oh, cars. Really? So I don't know which one you're talking about, but he, he's he – uh, Well, Hassan, Hassan posted something on uh, – I think it was Twitter. It looked like one of them cards from Monopoly, one of the Monopoly games or something. I don't know. I, I've seen a few different ones in our garage. He, he, they're, they're nice. He has a very nice collection from what I can tell. All right, we'll go to Jason Anderson. Hey, Luke, how you doing today, sir? Good, Jason. Good. Um, you know, one thing that has struck me about um, listening to you talk to Kobe and in, uh, you've talked about how he inspired generations of players and and um you know he wrote about you and and you know as a coach and and kind of what he he saw in you in terms of your your coaching qualities is that to take inspiration from him and and his words and his presence in your life um even now um yeah i mean more so than the than the words he wrote uh jason it's more of the living uh the experience of, of spending that time uh, with, with, you know, him and, and the way he approached everything he did, you know, I've said it before. He, he just, I mean, there was no, no excuses. There was no anything. It was just all in uh, total belief, total confidence. Um, and, and really uh, being able to achieve, um, you know, great unthinkable things. Uh, when you when you don't you know you don't put limits and you and you you're willing to work uh, harder than than everyone else and, and more just kind of being around that that greatness is where I take the my inspiration from uh, the time I got to spend with him and where I try to you know take some of those lessons and and uh, put them into my daily life and, and how I approach my craft. Okay, um, and can I? Marvin as well how the wrist is feeling how you know good the last few days have been maybe for him and and any other guys to recuperate a little bit yeah it's been it was it was nice I mean he, he look he's going to be playing through pain uh he didn't do he did he didn't do anything in the uh before we left and then today uh he did not only non-contact and not because it's you know we're afraid that he's going to hurt it but it's just one of those those uh, nagging injuries that every time it gets hit it's going to flare up and cause pain. So we're trying to balance that. Um, but it was nice to be able to, you know, he said he's feeling much better, uh, much better today uh, than he was yesterday and obviously the day before. And he's got another big body coming at him tomorrow. So uh, we'll just keep working with that and balancing that. Um, but, yeah, it was good for everyone to kind of get a couple of days to get their bodies fresh as opposed to playing <laughs> a back-to-back -to, -back to start the road trip. So um, yeah, we had a good practice today. Thank you. Uh, we will go to, sorry, I'm scrolling through here, Jason Jones. Hey, what's going on, Luke? Jason. Hey, just first thing, uh, I know going into the season, you talked about wanting to rev up the offense, play faster, and it seems like you've been able to do that well, in terms of scoring and, and things of that nature. Have the defensive struggles put a damper on the, those improvements, or are you still pleased with the way the offense has been able to uh, look most nights? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, we we still got a lot of a lot of um, a lot of room to grow with 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 that and where we're going to get it to. Uh, I would say, and I think where you're going with this is, I, I would say that we're we're gonna, we keep emphasizing that that's a what we want to do and how we're going to, uh, we're going to play. Um, but with the, the defensive struggles, uh, we've had to start kind of shifting some of our time that we have uh, on the practice court and in the, in the film and what we're preaching back to the defensive end again, because 
uh, we, we just, there's, I don't, the offense it won't matter if you're giving up 125 points a night. Um, so yeah, we, we're still pushing those things. I'm happy with where we're at as a team right now, offensively. Um, but we've had to kind of, we've had to, to, to really start, uh, emphasizing the, the defense with, with the, the, you know, random time we have together to get on the court. Yeah, I know you got you asked a lot about Kobe, but I know De'Aaron and Buddy were a couple of guys who went to his uh, little private get together beforehand. And a lot of guys on the team, obviously, for guys younger than us, Kobe was like their mic in terms of the guy they watched growing up. Is that something you bring up that you brought up at all during practice of how guys might be feeling today or how did you address that with the players? No, um, you know, I, to me, I like to if I feel like it needs to be addressed, then then I will. Um, but I like, you know, I, I like to give people the freedom to to to, you know, go through the experience If they want to come to me and talk about it. They know by now that I, I'm very open and, and available to do that. Um, but, yeah, we, we have a lot of our, our guys on this team. I mean, even, you know, Harrison and, and I mean, you, for sure, Buddy and and De'Aaron, but there's a lot of guys on our team that were heavily impacted by, uh, impacted and influenced from from Kobe. Um, so I'm, I'm sure everyone's feeling a certain type of way, but uh, what we did to to, um, to, to kind of get through it today was play basketball, which is always the best, healthiest way to do things, um, and you know just kind of keep moving forward. We'll go to Marshall Harris. Hey, hey Luke, uh, uh, talking to Sam Whiteside, he sounds like he's uh, uh, better and good to go. Um, can you uh, explain maybe what, what you saw in his absence uh, with uh, other guys and how will you implement him? Will roles change at all with him being back? No, uh, it was good to have him back. I mean, boy, we, it's, he's, you know, he, he, he does what he does very well and at a high level. So, uh, we missed him, um, and you know roles won't change uh, as far as other guys. We got to still do the same things, but um, it'll be nice to be able to get him back on the court. And uh, to talk about possibly bringing back the uh, All Star Game this year. I just want to know your thoughts on that, given where we are with the pandemic, games being postponed, teams not have enough guys to play. Is that something that you like think is a good idea, or you haven't really thought about it, or? I haven't thought about it. I honestly, that's the first I've heard of it. I, I don't. I don't. Maybe that came out today. I haven't really checked, but I, I thought it was canceled. Um, but I haven't. I haven't spent much time thinking about it. I would assume that with everything going on, it's that that would be pretty challenging to make happen. Crystal Saltis, Chris. Hello, coach. I would like to Hello. ask you. How do you see the, the connection between that between Therese Halliburton and uh, the Aaron Fox on the court? How do you see their growth? Do they are grown together? And what is your main priority about the game against uh, the Magic? Who, who is the first name? The growth of the Aaron Fox and who? And the Ar Therese Halliburton. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's been great. Uh, I, uh, you know, I look everything we're trying to get done this season. And, and one of those is, um, you know, continue to, to really see improvement from, from some of our young guys. And um, I think that, that the, their individual growth has both been very good this season. And I think playing together, um, they're continuing to get better. Uh, and, and I think that we're, you know, we're continuing to look for opportunities to get them on the floor together uh, you know, they both make, a, you know, winning, winning plays and, and bring playmaking to our group. So, uh, yeah, we're looking to continue to grow that. But I am pleased with the progress they've made so far this season. A couple more for you, Coach Sabrina Merchant. Hey, Luke. Uh, I'm curious what positives you saw out of Chemezi these past few games and if he's made any case to still get minutes with Hassan coming back. Yeah, he's done some nice things, um, and you know, from from you know being a he plays with a, a, a edge and he plays with um, with with a force that we really like as far as you know some of his roles, some of the dunks, some of the block shots he had. Uh, you know, we're, we we think uh, we think Mezzi's going to be a very solid player. He's young, he needs experience, um, 
he needs some time, but he's a he's an extremely hard worker. The coaching staff loves having him around. His teammates love him being out there. So he's doing everything he can, and uh, yeah, he had some nice moments. Uh, 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 now we're gonna go back to Hassan first, but we feel confident that whether in foul trouble or you know something else happening, that he can fill in again and he could help us uh, if, if his number gets called. Go to Sean Cunningham. Luke, I was just wondering about the the schedule. I mean, when you guys are used to playing pretty much every single day, and then you get a little bit of a, a break, how much, as a coach, do you worry about that? I mean, not that you guys were playing super well going to that next game, but when you come off of a, a win, how much does that disrupt what you guys do? No, I mean that's kind of been the, the theme all year and coming into the end of the season, Sean, we talked about like, there's going to be disruption. It's just going to happen. I mean, look, the New Orleans, uh, my, uh, New Orleans game got canceled last night, New Orleans Spurs. So what does that mean for us? Is this now a three game road trip or are they going to be playing again by the end of this trip? Like you just don't know. So yes, it causes disruption, but our, what we keep talking about is, um, you know, is staying staying with a positive mindset, staying with um, a growth mindset, staying in, in 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 the moment of what's what's important to us. What do we need to work on? I think our guys have done a good job of that. I mean, even today it was we were supposed to leave for practice at two, and then the test results weren't done in time, so we had to push it back. And then we got them so that the practice time changed three times within an hour this morning. So, like, there's stuff like that that's just going to keep happening. And we, as a group, have to just be ready for it. And I, and I give our, our players a lot of credit because I haven't heard much complaining at all from them.